Baker to me is a little bit more of a net. Right now, they're still developing. So if you look at Polk, he's more of a natural split end as a positioner to the ball. Um, where Baker can do that, but he's maybe not quite as good as Baker as a route runner. Like I actually like Baker more than Polk if you're judging them on a wide spectrum of players. They're not far apart, but I was higher on Baker. Mm -hmm. Um, So Baker to me is a more complete route runner at this stage who can give you some of that contested catch ability. He's a little bit, he has some highs and lows with his hands positions with certain um, plays that maybe at the high end level of like, comparing him to C.D. Lamb, he would fall short a little bit. But to me, like, again, the guy who would probably be above below C.D. Lamb but above Jacoby Myers would probably be Jeremy Macklin, and that's who I comped him to. Mm, okay. um, I comped Baker more to a Macklin type of player. And then the guy that everyone looked at, or a lot of people looked at, and thought he was somehow going to become that next guy was Van Jefferson. But Van Jefferson never really worked out because his hands – we're not great and he's not a great separator. He's a mm-hmm. he's more that guy that gets lost behind the third level of coverage based on long developing play action looks and that's how he gets deep. Baker's more of a guy that you can probably win he can probably win against a lot of guys in man coverage, maybe not the top guys all the time without really getting his his skills up to snuff, but I'd say Baker's better with breaks some setups, whereas Polk is a little bit up and down with those, and that's just the small difference. And I would say that Baker, Polk is probably better at the catch point, though Baker has some real highs in that category. He just also, he's just also a clap attacker at times where Polk isn't. And so some, yeah, some of those, and some of those are just difficult to do. Sometimes you're just making adjustments and sometimes you, I would laugh because some receivers are probably like, forget it. I'm just going to use one hand because I'm probably going to do better just getting one hand up here than I am trying to get two up at the same time without clapping it. So, but Baker's a little better after the catch, whereas Polk, I think, is one of those guys that can win after the catch. But sometimes the way he reads the field is a little wonky. Like when you ask him to go against the grain, sometimes he doesn't recognize those opportunities as well as I think Baker does. And Baker's a tackle breaker. Baker's very good at transitioning. Like you want your receivers, the minute they catch the ball with their back to the downfield defender is to turn tight and head downhill immediately and not try and go east-west. And Baker's great at that. He might be the best receiver in this class at transitions where he pulls through a tackle because he's violent with the turn downhill and he heads straight through and pulls through contact. And, and he can pull through multiple points of contact from defensive backs. So you get him in space and whereas, you know, I think that's why he'd be, he's a natural as a flanker to me. But okay. if you need him to be split in, it's kind of like he and, um, he and um, Burton were, Jermaine Burton are very similar players, if you ask me. I think Burton's a little more advanced as a route runner, but Baker and Burton, have a similarity in terms of being tough after the catch, being, you know, they're capable of being physical and they're capable of giving you or opportunities to play all three roles where you need them. So they the fact that they're interchangeable makes it makes it maybe harder if the defense, if the coaching staff tries to make them all around three position players right away, you might mm-hmm. get that Brandon Ayuk type of slow adjustment level or what the Chiefs are looking for. And now you're looking at, you know, and you go, well, I thought these guys were going to hit right away. And if they're asking them to play all three positions, that might be too much because not only are they figuring out where to align, but now they're having to read defenses in multiple ways and have the adjustments that are position specific. And they're having to do it with a rookie quarterback, possibly, who is also learning that stuff. Testing my skills on prize picks this season is the most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. If you have the skills, you can turn $10 into $1,000 with just a few taps. Use the code CLNS for the first deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. Baker and Paul getting to work with Jacoby Brissett would be a nice thing because Brissett's also been in a room with Amari Cooper who is a consummate technician and Amari Cooper would be at the top of the chain of both of these guys in terms of archetype in either direction you want to go as an X who's the ball winner 
or who can run after the catch or the route technician who can also give you after the catch stuff. Some of the things you said about Javon Baker also, one, I love the guy. Like, I kind of agree. I think he's going to probably be more of an impact player than Polk, whether it's early on or down the road. Just the separation, I feel like, gives him a higher ceiling. And that mentality, this dude's different. But when you talked about the Amari Cooper, I'm actually writing a piece right now, and I alluded to that, where with the Browns, that was their guy, where it's like, all right, it's man coverage. We're just going to Amari because we got an easy answer on the backside, which was something Elliot Wolf said the offense didn't have before the draft. And on top of that, the yards after catch. I think I tweeted it a couple of days ago where I forget the team they were playing, but Javon Baker's like coming back downhill against zone. He jumps up and makes the catch. And you see how quickly he does turn on that I'm a runner. As soon as it comes in, you see him look at where the defender is. He already feels like he knows. Adjust his body. And that makes it tough on the tacklers because if you're not in position, he knows where you are. He spins out of it and then has that toughness where he fights through contact where I'm excited. I know yeah. you saw the same thing. That's awesome because it was very impressive for a guy who, again, wasn't really a short target in college. No. And it's one of those things that, you know, you're going to get the, you're going to get like the social media, you know, high school football coach or former high school football player who's going to say, well, yeah, guys, but that, you know, everybody, everybody gets taught that in high school. Yes. If you have a decent high school coach, you're going to get taught what a good transition is. It's good that you remember that, okay? But the the best football players, the highest level, they're just executing fundamentals on the most consistent level and know how to apply them in ways that um, you should apply them in theory, and they do it, you know, tirelessly. The thing is, is that there are a lot of players who don't have that level of high school coaching, who are just very talented athletically or have certain skills down, or they just weren't always good. Not every receiver is good at everything. Just like, you know, you could name your favorite guitarist and you ask them, you know, and there are some studio musicians who could play country music, bluegrass and jazz and, and R&B, and they could kill all of it, you know, and sound sound like all the guys who are the leading stylists in, the, in those genres. And then you have some people who you just hire for heavy metal, you know, because that's what they can do. You know, and they do it better than anybody else, but that's all they do. Now, in the theory of what you should learn as a guitar player, there are certain things that that you are supposed to learn, but some people worked at some things more than others or weren't made aware of it. So, you know, there's a lot of guys like Marquise Lee back in the day with the Jaguars, great after the catch receiver when he was in the open field and didn't, but he didn't know how to transition well. And he was one of those guys that would lose three yards trying to gain another 30 when he could have just gained five, mm -hmm. you know? And it's just like the running back, like Lawrence Maroney back with the Patriots when he bounced everything outside, when there are certain plays that you're like, dude, I'd rather you gain two or lose two rather than gain, than rather lose five trying to gain 50, yeah. you know? And that's, and that's what transition, the value of transitioning is. So the fact that Baker does that, it's unusual, even if it seems like a just mundane um, technique point or conceptual thing that's taught, you know, even in the lower levels of football. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets at game time. Download the game time app, create an account, use the code CLNS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem the code CLNS and get 20 dollars off download game time today last minute tickets lowest prices guaranteed